Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and I did a little demo there of some sort of ostinatos uh, where my hands were playing a particular rhythm and my bass drum was soloing or playing maybe some written rhythms. And this is the way that I practice coordination, also the way I teach a lot of my students from playing basic rock all the way to sort of a jazz fusion kind of busier thing like you heard at the end. So today we're going to be talking about a basic coordination sequence that I used to teach and this is in my book. Now there's two, uh, well there's five versions of my book out but I don't know how far back you go. But uh, the last edition, the one that was out for the previous three years, uh, that will be on page 179 and the new fifth edition that came out a couple months ago That'll be on page 181, just so you know the pages. And I'll show some of this on the screen here. So this type of teaching is not new. A great drummer and teacher named Gary Chester was teaching and wrote a few books, uh, the New Breed books. There's two volumes of those. And in those books, what he did was he would take these kinds of ostinatos, or he called them systems, and have them presented in the book and then he'd have a bunch of rhythms, and the goal was to read the rhythms under these systems. And he would have you sing the rhythms, he would have you sing the quarter note, he would have you sing upbeats, all kinds of things, so you could develop your awareness of the time. Now the reason for all this is so you can play evenly, and your awareness of playing with a click track as well is really, really important to you know, play in the studio or just be a good drummer overall. So you want to make sure you can do that. Now playing evenly is one of the most difficult things as a drummer because it's so physical. We have all these limbs to worry about. We have our bass drum, sometimes two bass drums. We have our hi-hat foot. We have our right hand, our weak left hand maybe. You know, so all these things have to work together and play together to make the drum set sound like one instrument not a bunch of different instruments, okay? So the whole idea with playing these kinds of things is learning how to coordinate with a click track and to play evenly. Now you don't have to sound like a machine, you don't have to sound like a drum machine. You could play a little ahead, a little behind, you know, things can vary here and there. That's part of a human groove. Uh, if you all played perfectly, then nothing really would have a sound. There would be no individual sound. So all of us have a sort of individual groove that we have. Some drummers, a really specific groove, you can tell who they are right off. And that's what you want to kind of develop, your own sound. But first, in order to do that, you have to learn these basic kinds of things. So today I'm going to show you how I teach this and also how I practice it. So if you go to page, uh, like I said, 179 in the 4th uh, edition, 181 in the newer edition, you'll see these basic coordination uh, exercises. And there's 16 different rhythms, and I call it a basic coordination sequence. Also in my book, there's about 10 pages in the front and the back of different rhythms that you can use to play over these. Now what I do for myself, and also what I suggest my students do, is make a book of different rhythms, like I have here, from several other books. So you have to own the books, and I suggest getting all these books, okay, before you start copying them. But you, once you own the book, you can make copies of it, and you can put them in a little binder, like I have here, and then you never run out of rhythmic patterns. So I have all kinds of 6-8 patterns, 4-4 four, four patterns, odd meter patterns in here. Now the following books are what this consists of. So it's my book, it's Gary Chester's Newbury books 1 and 2, it's the Louis Belson modern 4-4 four, four, uh, time and the odd time books, as well as an old book, a Ralph C. C. Pace book, if you can find it, can't remember the name of it right now, but I do have some rhythms from that. And also uh, a book, a couple books by Chet Dobo, I think that's how you say it. He uh, wrote a funk drumming workbook, and I think that's out of print. A long time ago, great book though, I wish it was back in print. And I never met Chet, but I really enjoy his books. So he has a few books of rhythms as well, uh, most notably Latin rhythms. And I use those as well in here. So I use these to teach out of, and also, like I said, to practice myself. So let's go through the, this way I practice this. Now the first thing you want to do is just learn these as three-way coordination. So closed hi-hat with your right hand if you're a righty. You can also play open style and uh, lead with your left hand if you want. That's a great thing to do later on. But I would lead with your strong hand to begin with. And the first 
exercise here is very, very simple. It's just this. You could play with the uh, stick on the shaft, on shaft on the hi-hat, or the tip, either one's fine. Now, when you do this, you want to put the metronome on, and you want to subdivide sixteenths, especially since the rhythms we're going to be reading today, which are from uh, my page seven in my book, uh, we'll just do the first line kind of over and over again so I can demonstrate all these. And if you put it on 16th, that sounds like this. So there's going to be four groups of those 16th notes in a bar of 4-4. Four, four. And then you're going to play the rhythms from page 7. We'll just do the first line to save time. I'll show you what that sounds like. One, two, three, four. The idea is to learn each one of these separately and kind of master them. And as you learn the three-way coordination, once you've got that mastered, then you want to go to the ride cymbal and do something with your hi-hat. So in my book, there's literally a hundred or more hi-hat patterns that you could do with your foot. There's splash patterns, there's just regular patterns. A good one for this particular thing would be just to play upbeats with your hi-hat like this. All right, so now we're getting a little more difficult. Now we have four-way coordination going. Each hand is doing something different. So that's four-way coordination. And this is actually a lot trickier, especially for a young student. So if you have some young students out there, I would, I would introduce them to this right away so they can learn to use their hi-hat. So many people learn, and they never learn to use their hi-hat with their foot. It's sort of like a foot rest, you know, and then they play it like that. They just don't do anything with it. You've got to learn at a young age, and I did. I'm so thankful for that to use my hi-hat. It just becomes another part of the instrument. So the next one, number two, everybody knows this rhythm, so it's So you can do that with just the tip of the stick on the hi-hat. Or you could do shaft tip like this. And once again, that was line one from page seven. All right, and if you want to play on the ride cymbal, let's say we do something else with our hi-hat. So why don't we play a splash pattern like this? So that's something you can do. And, and you know, this it's endless, really, the combinations. But again, the first thing you want to do uh, is learn these basic rhythms that are written here. Now, they start simple, and they get really hard. By the time you get to number 16, that's extremely difficult. In fact, that's kind of a David Garibaldi. 14 through 16 is something Garibaldi uses a lot in his playing. And you can see that in some of, of his books as well. So this could take years to go through these. That's OK. <laughs> Because if you could do them evenly, you're going to be a really good drummer in that particular style. Now, of course, if you play jazz, you'd have to work on this style. So you'd play all kinds of fancy stuff up and down. And that's a little bit of a different challenge. So as you develop all the styles, you learn all these different things. If you're learning to play Afro-Cuban music, you might want to play clave. So again, you see I'm playing some clave with my left foot, a bombo pattern with my bass drum, the cascara here, and soloing with my left hand. All right, again, much more complicated, but the same principle of learning. And that's what I, I kind of want to get through to everybody today, is that this is the way you do this in a very organized, systematic manner, one step at a time. It's like you're going up this giant flight of stairs your whole life trying to get to the top. You probably never will get to the top. There is no top, really. You just keep going. That's the beauty 
of playing any instrument or just being an artist. You're always striving to get better. You're always working on more difficult stuff. And I love it. Uh, I still practice this kind of stuff all the time. It's really fun. Keeps me young, sort of. Okay? So let's play through some of these now. And what I'll do is I'll play the, the beat first by itself. And then I'll play the first line of page seven to keep it simple. And then I'll play some more time and the same thing. We'll go through one to 16. So it's going to take a little while. But I just want to demonstrate how all these work. Now a few little things. When we get to number six, there's two ways you can play that. All right? Especially if it's fast. So if it's at 100, it shouldn't be too much of a problem to do this. But if we say we go to like 116 or something like that, a little faster, then it becomes trickier. So there's two ways to handle that. You could do a push-pull thing like this. Which is not easy. Or you could do two hands on the hi-hat like this, and then leave that one hi-hat note out. So that's how that would work, just so you know. The rest of these you could pretty much play all the way up to uh, quarter note equals 120 uh, without too much trouble. Some of them become more difficult. So again, vary your tempos every day. A good tempo to start with might be quarter note equals 80. I'm going to do them at 100, so we're not here for three hours. So with my hi-hat for all these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a splash pattern like this for the whole thing. And then I'm just going to play the patterns that you see on the page on the cymbal and the snare drum, and I'll play the first line, like I said, of page 7 all the way through. And then we'll go on to the next one. One, two, three, four.
Okay, so that's not easy, right? And, you know, you're not expected to go through all of these at once like that. But eventually, that's what you want to be able to do, switch from one to the other without losing time and playing as evenly as possible, which is very, very tricky. So let's take an example of how you practice these over time. So you might pick number one and just play that on the hi-hat and then play maybe, you know, uh, some eighth note rhythms under it. So for my book or the Louis Belson book, and get comfortable with that with a metronome, record yourself, listen back, criticize, make sure it's perfect. And then you move on to some harder rhythms, 16th note rhythms, and then maybe 16th note rhythms two at a time. So the two note combinations with your bass drum. And then once you're comfortable there, you move over to the cymbal and you start playing stuff with your hi-hat with the same rhythm, number one. Okay, so you're taking that first rhythm, again, which is this, and you're literally working it to death so you can play anything under that on the kit. And that might take a month, but, you know, in 16 months, you'll actually have unbelievable control over the instrument if you practice correctly in these styles. Again, there's other styles. There's many styles. That's why uh, you need to practice a lot over many years because there's so much to learn. So that's the whole idea of doing this coordination sequence. So email me any questions you have on it. Uh, once again, this is nothing new. This is in a lot of books. Another great book that I forgot about uh, to mention is David Garibaldi's Future Sounds. That's a little bit like this, but what he's using is permutations where you're taking a beat and you're moving it over 1 16th. And that's another great challenge. That's a great book. I love that book. So maybe check that out too once you get uh, a hold of this stuff. Don't just dive into that right away. It's much, much more difficult. So 1 through 16 first and then those kinds of things. So I'll play a little for you and then we'll call it a day. Let's up the tempo here a little to 140. One, two.